All right, friends, family, and everything in between. Welcome to another round of modern. On the left, we have Josh Lindy. Not Lindy. We'll fix that in a second. Playing four color on math with cards from Lord of the Rings. And on the right, we have Harley's Mail playing um, Cabal, Coffers, Mono Black, Lamp, Black Tron, whatever you want to refer to it as. Uh, also featuring brand new cards from Universes Beyond, Tales of the Lord of the Rings. Potentially the longest set name for any card game out there, really. It is a, a mouthful. So yeah, let's talk about this. There is, this is going to be a long one. Uh, both of these decks are not the fastest, though Coffers can in fact kill your opponent pretty quickly. And as talked about, ad nauseum on this channel, people uh, don't concede when four color has advantage. Now, Harley is a player that would probably do that. Uh, he's quite good at this game and knows what's going on most of the time. Uh, Jack leading with a flooded strand, getting a country triumph, Harley Lee on a relic of Regenitus of the Swampy. Now, both of these decks are playing four copies of the One Ring. Four mana artifact, I'm sure if you have paid any attention to Modern in the last couple weeks, you know what it does, but let's read it out aloud. Because I think this is the first thing we've had it on the channel. Right, the one ring, like I said, four mana legendary artifact is indestructible when the one ring enters the battlefield. If it, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life for each burden counter on the one ring. You can tap the ring, put a burden counter on the one ring, and then you draw a card for each burden counter on the one ring. So, very good. You cast it, you get uh, protection from everything, and then you can tap it, draw one card in your upkeep, take a damage, then tap it, draw two more cards. So, for four mana, you get to draw three. And that's assuming it just ends there. It usually doesn't. I'm pretty sure this is the match where I hardly draw five cards off of it in one turn. It's a very good card. I'll take Teferi. Harley pitches a grief here. Or uh, evokes a grief pitching a fatal push. Takes to fairy time round away right from Josh. We got it. And I think I'll just pass. Now, if you don't know what the coffers ramp deck is, is it plays Cabal Coffers. A land that says tap two mana, tap it, add one black for each swamp you control. Comes um, very well with the card called Urborg, uh, Tomb of Yogmoth, which is a legendary land that says each land is a swamp in addition to its other land types. Cast bow masters, bows. You. So while the deck does play a lot of basic swaps, it allows you to play other stuff like F Field of Ruins and just turn it into a swap to swamps to ramp up your office mana. Now that creature who just flashed it in the end step there is a Orcish Bowmasters. Also brand new from Lord of the Rings and a really good card. Probably the second best card in the set without really any competition. Not that there isn't other good cards in the set, but like the ring and bowmasters are just leagues above everything else. So one out of black flash when the bowmasters enters the battlefield and whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one they draw on each of their draw steps. The bowmaster goes one damage to any target and then you mass one. Fixed. Which basically means uh, if you don't have an orc army token you create one and put a one on counter on it. But if you do have a orc army uh, token in play already you just put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, the bowmaster is a one one and it's honestly just a really good card. It's a little stronger in Legacy than it is in Modern, because Modern doesn't have a ton of additional draw effects besides stuff like Omnath and uh, like Teferi activation. But if Teferi's on the board, you can't flash any Bowmasters anyways. And most likely, if they you have a Bowmaster and your opponent casts a Teferi, they're just going to bounce your Bowmaster. But in Legacy, your opponent can uh, cast Brainstorm, and in response, you can flash on the Bowmaster trigger it uh, on the ETB because for some reason it does it when it enters the battlefield as well. Uh, and then they can draw their three cards and then you can shoot them three times and make a 4-4. Four four. <laughs> Very good. As you can see, Lyle's hardly get a little bit of tempo play in the early uh, turns before he's able to you know, cast big things. Gosh, way to cast a Renaissance here. We'll ping the Bowmaster. Makes sense, no reason to plus here. There's no lands in the graveyard. And even if there were, I you could remove them in response. 
play a plane as his land turn. Using those Kamigawa basics. Copy of Cabal Coffers. Now it's definitely reading out card effects, but we, so we missed the Field of Ruin activation on the Catcher Triumph there. Because of the herb work, uh, Hillary does have four copy, four swamps in play, meaning that activation of Cabal Coppers will create four mana. Yeah, I'll attack run. Four mana. Three. Can cast blue here. You can keep Josh's hand. See, this green force on math with his creation, the one ring, and I think prismatic ending? I think that's the card on the far left. Likely taking on that here, yeah. It's tough. It's between the ring and the on now. It is only realistically between the ring and on now. On now is going to be a little bit harder for Harley to deal with. I imagine what Harley's game plan in game one is going to be, and uh, potentially in post board games as well, yes. is to find Karn the Great Creator and just get a Sundering Titan and remove Josh's mana. With the Sundering Titan ETB. He's shooting five five lands down against four colors. Super good. Uh, and if Josh has an on on the board that Harley can't answer, it's just going to be. I don't know. Easier for Josh to still play the game even after five lands get shot out. Because if you have a fetch, or like Ren plus fetch, means he always has mana. So. math ability, quite good. Right, the one ring has entered the battlefield. Oh, uh, he's gotten protection. Josh has drawn a card. Does fetch land. Does opt to use it now. Cruising it's a cop. Ooh, maybe not. But probably getting wrong in trial. Besides, I think we'll wait. Okay. Cool. Okay. We'll wait. Alright, settles on the Rogan Triumph. Red, going to try and pick up that Mr. Reinforced. Is the Relic going to get popped here? And Relic with players' graveyards. Now, we saw Josh was thinking about getting Sacred Foundry instead. I think the idea is that he wants to leave the Cycler in the deck. Understandable. He's really looking for it. Like the reason to get the truck, uh, the land he's looking for there is to get either uh, a red or white source. The other thing is he's fetching of the misty, so he couldn't get the sacred foundry anyways. But I can understand the reasoning of wanting to leave the cycle in the back. So the ring coming down for Harley, which means that Harley's Harley is probably dying. Probably just trying to keep him off of red mana. Make, it un make him unable to hardcast Fury. The deck does not play a basic mountain typically anymore. I don't think, actually, the deck hasn't played a basic mountain in a while. I think the last time I registered basic mountain four color was SG Baltimore, like a year and a half ago now? Maybe two years? It's been a bit. So field activation. Put him in a corner, great creator. Little plus here. I imagine Harley plays three copies of the ring in the, in the main board, and one in the side. Just to have one on demand that he can grab with Karn at any point in time. 
Build minus. Sunder tag. Sunder tag. Kill Ren. Brief attacks and killing Ren. Scarf's copy of the ring. Unable really to do anything now besides paying him for damage until Karn gets removed. Do you have enough? Yeah, we do know he has a good medicine in here. One short From the earlier. Reef. Yeah, killing Ren six. Seven so Titan entering the battlefield. Uh, we'll shoot down five forest, different lands. Island, mountain, swamp. Go. Sure. Leaves Josh with just a copy of Temple Garden. Probably. My first initial thing was like, why doesn't he just leave a basic? But I assume. Uh, he has another copy of Field of Ruin in deck, or in hand, that he's just going to snipe off the temple with. But this really looks like it's going to be game for Josh. But for hardly going to be one. Josh, you're only three cards here. I don't know what gets him into it. Like solitude, double solitude by the time. Enough. Yep. All right. Gonna concede. Harley gonna take game one. There's some draws. With mono block offers. And Josh on the playing game too. Yeah. Even though he wins the game. Catcher trying to coming out for Joshua. I'll be shocking a Temple Bird. I'll pass. Harley cast a Dolphy Voidwalker in response. Josh most likely going to cast that old Domery Spell we see in his hand. Finding on there. I just don't want to be an exile. Yo, Paul. Wait, yo. Don't be new resolve. Oof, we'll see grief here. All right, we have a reprieve to fairy time raveler, Nissa resurgent animist, Omna, prismatic ending land. Reprieve. 
Reprieve, also a pretty cool card, uh, and also from Lord of the Rings. So it's one on a white, instant, return target, spell to its owner's hand, draw card. So you can do some pretty cute things uh, with it. Notably, it does not count as a spell, so you can get through like Cavern Souls. If your opponent's playing Amulet Titan, they cast their Primeval Titan off of the Cavern, you can just bounce it in their hand. Uh, other cute plays is like casting your EE on, uh, or your uh, Chalice on zero against your Cascade opponent. They go to Force and Negation it, you retrieve your Chalice back to hand, draw a card, play the Chalice again. Which is something you can do with Remand, but Reprieve is cool and new. Grief takes it a fairy, adding it to the Dolphy pile. Dolphy Voidwalker is a card that I've just always been very impressed with. It's perfectly yeah. fair. It's just a very good card. Two mana, decent stats, can't be blocked, and then can potentially turn into something later on in the future. Here for that. There's another Dolphy. Josh probably going to fetch in response. Right, pass. Yeah, that's up. Draw the brand for turn. Pretty good. Opt to play Nissa instead. We'll play Floodstream. Nissa, a. a card from March of the Machines Aftermath Red. that terrible set yep. uh, that has some really good cards in it, unfortunately. Uh, I think the reason I really call it a terrible set is it's like a 50 card set and you get 5 card packs. It just it doesn't make sense for it to be a standard legal set to me. And it being standard legal therefore makes it modern legal. Uh, and there's like good cards like Nissa being in the set, just, it complicates all the things. So anyways, this is a 3 mana 3-3 three, three with landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. Add one mana of any one color. Cool. It's got a Lotus Cobra effect. And then if it's, this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an L4 elemental well, card. Put that card in your hand. The rest of the oh, the so, so fetch land then. becomes uh, Red, green. 3 mana. So the land that you fetch Sorry. comes in untapped and also draws you a card. Very good. Especially adding into the four color deck where, like, you know, Omnath wants you to make multiple land drops a turn. Anyways, so. You just get more mana to play with. Right? Yeah, you just cracked that? Yeah, yeah I don't want to crack that. Then, yeah, you can get them. Just thinking about the Misty or the one, that's all. That's close. Um. It also can draw you uh, Solitude or Endurance or any of the you know, elementals. Most of it. I don't think there's <laughs> any other elves you ever want to play besides. Like, <laughs> it can get you additional copies of Nyssa, which is cool because you can pitch it to Endurance. Uh, but I don't think there's any other elves worthwhile. There are a decent number of elves in Lord of the Rings. Obviously. Um, I don't know if any of them are good enough to make the cut there. Blooded Halfling, unfortunately, is a Halfling citizen, not an Elf. Uh, can you imagine if that was an Elf? One drop would be bonkers levels of good, because Delighted Halfling already is just a nuts card. Uh, and is the rare that I think is probably underpriced the most. Like, it's an $18 rare, and I think that's still too cheap for the card. It's just very good for what it does. Being able to cast a lot of uncounterable crap is... Disgusting. Like legend, any legendary spell being uncountable is not okay. I'm gonna play that anyway. I feel like there's a Legolas in the set that's like not awful and could maybe be played. Uh, the scrying stuff. Like Master Archer is a pretty decent card. Uh, but you're not going to be casting enough spells that targets creatures that you control, or like that would target Legolas. Um, 
Yeah, I guess there's not really anything in the set that you can play. Because a lot of the stuff is like scry related, and four color doesn't scry. Carly has traded his Dothy in for a Teferi. Teferi has bounced Nissa. I think they're just talking about what cards Josh in Josh's hand that Harley knows about. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot. No, no, no. no. no I'm, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> the Galadriel cards. The Simic. That's the Commander one. There you go. The green one. What do you do? <coughs> yeah, the Simic Galadriel is Scry related. The five mana Galadriel. Oh, uh, this is the, the quote unquote mini permeable titan. Because uh, it has an ETB or attack trigger. 1-1 one, one counter, create a food, create a food. Yeah, it's not good enough. Yeah. Alright, Ren going to ping the fairy here. Harley has played his own copy of the one ring. Yep. Four mana on math look is creation. Or draw, or draw cards draw card before he gets to do anything else. Thank you. I will, uh, Going to life. play land, gain four life. Yep. of the ring. We are at three total cards drawn this game. Two. Is an Ugin the ineffable? Ugin, six mana. Uh, color spells you cast cost two less. Or, yeah, color spells you cast cost two less to cast. Uh, plus one ability, exile the top card of your library face down. Look at it. Create a 2 2 color spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, you put the exiled card into your hand. And then minus three. Destroy target permanent. That's one or more colors. Not an amazing planeswalker, but a good card. So we're going to see the minus three here. And he can shoot down uh, either the Nessa, the Amnath, or the Ren, as they are all one or more colors. Honestly, this Coffers deck is really cool. The more and more that I see of it, the more I kind of want to play it. I just don't want to buy four copies of Urborg. Well, so I don't want to make a guy, or Urborg is I want to kill one of your guys. expensive. How many cards do you have in your hand? Four. Not like expensive, expensive, but it does seem to be the choice that you have to be made. For as little as I get to play Magic anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's like at that price four point, hand, I don't want to buy four copies of it. One is a reprieve. Because, like, I'd want the, the Dead Marshes one from the Lord yeah. of the Rings because it looks gorgeous. So They're like 50 bucks. Make a blocker? Oh, and there's a Lord of the Rings Cabal Coffers. <laughs> but you 
didn't pick anything up with this. No, because I, I shot your my there, Teferi. There is my Teferi. All their things are too so in this list, but I don't know they're expensive. Okay. I know oh, there's an answer. Red. Right. Um, yeah, red's popping up. So you don't have a land. There's a lot of lands in your deck, though. If you draw a fetch land, it's extremely bad for me. I can't handle that. I can keep it from getting more lands with the rent. But if I tick down the even, I'm priced into doing something about the rent because then the rent can kill the fetch land. Um, so... Nissa. Use my two mana. All right, so we've shot down the Nissa. We're playing another card in the Great Reader here. Uh, color spells I cast oh, cost two. Card cost two because I'm playing as I card much. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Consulting his sideboard. <laughs> well, down tip. Goes and gets a yes, pitting needle. needle. Okay. Name Ren. Pitting needle costs nothing because of Ugin. Yes. We'll name Ren in six years. Okay. Okay. Honestly, the cost reduction on Ugin might be the best part of this card. Being able to drop, like, the ring cost two mana now, which is absurd. And there's probably so many things in the sideboard that just add that cost reduction is ridiculous. Free liquid metal coatings, free copy of the stone rain. Uh, City escape leveler, and Sunder Titan are six mana cards now. Worm Cold is a four mana card if he's playing that. So where the loyalty abilities of Ugin aren't amazing, that static ability is spectacular. Alright, maybe you light it halfway for Josh. Amath attacks in, kills the card. Says go. Harley will take two in the upkeep from the ring. Tap and draw three. Feels awful. <laughs> Stop it. I wanted to just like put my hand in shoulder. Six. Ten. Second Cabal Coffers means a shit ton of mana. Karn the Great Critter coming out here. Picked the wrong one. Catch his Sundering Titan from the board. I'm 
trigger. Twenty-three. Riley has so much goddamn. <laughs> Here comes Orcus Bowmasters. I'll say Bowmasters is good against the ring. I'm talking about cards that don't. I was talking about how modern doesn't have a, that many draw effects. We did just add a very strong draw effect into the format that a lot of decks are currently playing. I need a die. I'm gonna use this one, and we'll. I got something else to signify this. Oh, I'm gonna shoot. Okay. What a board state. Me, right? Or half one? Okay. Uh, one in the pool. That could be wrong. being cast here. Solitude here, exile the Orcus Bowmasters. Probably will get a life going up to 18. It's not dead, right? It's just an artifact. It's an artifact. Metal coating the speed bets here. Turning it into an artifact. Josh will not be able to activate it this turn. Well, I guess it's floating in response, but. It is on top. So you can use it on my turn. Okay. Until it dies. Until it dies. Until it dies. Until it dies. Until Finds Leyline Binding Forest and what looked like a windswept teeth. Not quite what he was looking for here. I imagine he wanted much more action than just a leyline binding, but so it will exile with some teeth. Probably puts the binding in hand, bottom next to the forest. Federation goes to the Dolphy pile. Gained four life off the Onmath trigger.
Go to cast the ley line binding. Targeting something off camera. The pithing needle. Okay. Ren kills the orcish, uh, the orcish army. Solitude attacks in at what looks like the Karn as well as Omnath. Is that all? That is all. Uh, spirit token block Solitude. So trigger. Game three. Yeah, uh, that's excellent. You're at 30. Karn die. Josh, able to clean up the board a little bit. Is that 30 health? Probably makes another creature. How many do you have? Two. Took yeah, three in the upkeep you know, off the ring. Seven, twelve. Put a eight. Three. You have eight in the pool still? Yep. a good sport here. Sundering Titan. Mount. Pop and lands again. Island. Swamp. Forest. Three, five lands from the board. Ooh, Joshua too. Going to march of wretched sorrows here for I believe. Uh, pass. Yeah, it was just two this time. You return too late. We'll play land, gain four life. Make four. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there should be a six. I'm sorry. Full fetch again. Get the third trigger from on there, okay? Doing four damage to each uh, tank holder. And of the, or each opposing tank walker in play. There's an Elish Ranging cast here. You have to tap the forest. I do, I do. <laughs> Not that it really matters, but. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, Dothy will get traded in for the reprieve that hit the Dothy pile a couple turns ago. Things coming. Alright, we'll take four in the upkeep, going down to nine. Alright, can you kill me in time? Yeah. <laughs> he says with so much confidence. I'm gonna draw, um, I don't know what. But <laughs> Fury. That's why I kept drawing red. Was that? That's why I was keeping off red. I actually don't have Fury today. I didn't, I didn't bring it in. I thought about it, but I decided to use it. Probably. Probably better than some of these. Maybe. Put <laughs> 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 so her in pop, rather than Brian. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of basic left in deck. Maybe. <laughs> I love the basic one here. Yeah, there's that basic. Okay, goes and gets an island. He gains four more life. 38? 37. Harley able to draw five cards off of the I ring. 34. Oh, but I did. I know what I matched. Yeah, yeah. I touched twice. Yeah. Yep, 32, 32, you have me at 14, 36, I think I missed the second pass. If, yeah. if he taps a draw 5, you would have caught me. 5 and 12, 14, 15, yeah. I haven't caught you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ooh, now I got this guy to survive for two turns. <laughs> no, don't kill your ring. <laughs> don't replay another ring. Field demolition getting played here. Eight plus six. Bunch of mana. Getting super low on time in the round. There's under a minute left. Oh, what the hell's the name of that card? The Calamity? You got banned in standard. I put it in the Grixis mid range deck. Like nine and lay a second ring, I'll concede. I don't have one. Evoke a spare. <laughs> Target binding, spare plus on binding. binding. It's a 6 6. I didn't kill it yet. Uh, <laughs> yet. 11. X equals 10 on the binding. Thank you. March of Wretched Sorrows. I'll gain 10 life. We'll gain 10 All life. Right. I'll let that for nine. And I'll let the life gain of 10. Josh, I think it looks like he's going to scoop to that. Indeed. I was going to take a 2-0 with mono black coffers over four color. I'm now. Thank you for watching, folks. And have a great rest of your day. Or don't. It's up to you.